One writer said, I trust in God, for I know he cares. It doesn't matter what comes. I trust in God. I wish you would have been today. And now, and so now, and so now, in order for me to overcome my trials and my skepticism, I must gravitate to the single greatest motivator of hope and faith. Do you hear me? In order for me to get over my trials and my skepticism, I must gravitate to the single greatest motivator of hope and faith. And that is, I need to gravitate to the understanding of the resurrection of Jesus. Are you with me? Yes, the resurrection. For if God raised Jesus from the common man's grave, then I am certain that the Goliath in my life is about to get a great fight. Oh, Jesus. Oh, help me, Lord. Help me. Uh, I, I gotta gravitate to the thing that, that, that helps me to get over my trials. I, I, I gotta gravitate to the thing that helps me to get over my situation and my skepticism. Uh, for Goliath is about to kill me and to cut my head off. Did you hear what Goliath said up David? He said, who is this little stripling? God, I dare to come out and fight. But because I am motivated by this one common right. theme, right. and that is that the resurrection of Jesus proves that God has overcome this world. I heard Jesus say, don't worry, I have already overcome the world. And because of this single most motivating factor, I'm ready to face my Life. I'm ready to take on come hell or high water. We got a situation now in the house of God, in the church of Jesus Christ, where demons have eroded, have risen, sorry, and are fighting and are fighting to take over the church of God. Lord God, and many of the souls are crying. Many of the people, the prophets, have been proven powerless. Lord of mercy. Many of the powerful people who should have been standing in God have been found out that they were always skeptic. Though they demonstrated power in years past, it is now proven that they can't fight the devil. Some are weeping, some are crying, some are mourning and saying it's all over. But I have one thing on my side, and that is God has raised Jesus from the dead. And I have this as my motivational tool. And though I go, for I've been sequestered in the spirit to fight. And though I put on my warfare, and though I shut my feet with a gospel of preparation, and though I put on my breastplate, and I put on my shield, I grab the word of God, I put on my helmet. By the one thing that I have that's greater than any helmet and any shield, I have a confidence that God raised Jesus from the dead. That means even if I die, oh, the skipper destroy my body. Yet in my flesh shall I see God. I go into the battle saying, if I die, I die. I'm going into the battle saying, our Lord God, God is my strength and my song. He is my shield and my battle. He is my all in all. For God reigns Jesus from the dead. And now I'm confident. And now I'll say it like Caleb. I say it like Joshua. I say, give me the mountain. I go shy. And give me the mountain. Give me the Amalekite. Give me the Pesamite. Give me the Amalekite. I'm more than a conqueror. For if God raised Jesus from the dead, I don't care what disease, and I don't care what mental illness, and I don't care the blood that's leaking. God can coagulate any blood. God can fix any problem. Because God raised Jesus. The Bible tells us now. Yes, Lord. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. I, I, I don't know. I don't know 
if you understand what I'm saying. I, I can't move on. The Holy Ghost. Stop. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. <laughs> it's the greatest motivating power in the world. We have great motivational speakers, but they can't speak to this. Praise the Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. The world fears death. As much as they motivate, they fear death. God help me this morning. The thought that I have when my trials are before me helps me to step over to walk around or walk through my trials. For the power that it takes to raise a man from the dead uh, is unfathomable. Unfathomable to a man's mind. It is impossible. Angels can understand this. For they've never dead. They've never died and be raised. But when I think of the power that it takes to raise somebody from the dead, and I put it together that my father is the power. Amen. Oh, oh, yes. yeah, don't come crying to me when you have problems. Yeah. Well, for the Lord has given you an answer, but you will receive it. Amen. You're an skeptic. You're a skeptic. You're a skeptic. God raised Jesus from the dead. That means all things are possible. Yes. Yes. The Bible tells us now that three days after the Lord was crucified, that something magnificent happened by Simon's new tomb. That was that Simon gave to the Lord that his body would not be contaminated or defiled. The book says that the Marys and Salome brought spices so as to embalm the body of Jesus. Uh, but as they were walking, they were talking amongst themselves, the book said, with regards to the impossibility. Now, hold on. You have been walking with Jesus for three and a half years. And you mentioned the word impossible. Can I touch you today? Yes. You have been saying that you pray to the Lord. You cry to Him. Yes. And yet you have doubt. Mm. Help us, Jesus. <clears throat> they were talking about the impossibility of rolling away the stone so as to enter into the tomb. The Bible says that as they got there, they were awestruck. It was fine before. They were awestruck by the visual of an open or a rolled away tomb. They were awestruck by the fact that the stone was rolled away. The book says that they anxiously walked in. But when I, I was studying the word, I, I said, how is it that they were awestruck? How is it that they were astonished? How is it that they were startled at the fact that the stone was rolled away? Do you understand that though we walk with Jesus, we still don't believe? Help us this morning. Can you see it? Though you saw, you've seen the power of God work in your life and in other people's life, yet you have reservations. Oh Lord, I wish somebody walk with me there. They were awestruck by the fact that the stone was rolled. To my recollection, Jesus told them that if you destroy the temple, I'll raise it up. They were awestruck. They did not believe. You cannot conceive if you cannot believe. 
<laughs> you cannot conceive if you cannot believe. In other words, you cannot get your breakthrough unless you believe what God said He would do. Oh, so if you've been waiting for God for a long time, but you'll never see the fruition of the promise of God because you don't believe. My belief now says that uh, though I don't see it, I know my God who raised Jesus from the dead. I know he will do all things for he knows what I need before I even ask him. And so I put my trust, Sister Julie, in the Lord. And so because I believe, hallelujah, it moves God. And because I believe, I'm able to conceive if Zion travail, she will bring forth. Oh, Jesus. This is too deep for you. This is too deep for you. If Zion will travail, that means Zion is certain that she has a baby. That's right. Zion is certain that she's going to bring forth something. I'm going to bring forth my deliverance. I'm going to bring forth my healing. I'm going to bring forth what God said I will be. For God has prescribed the place next to him for me. I believe that I'll get there. But I have to travail in order to bring forth. That's right. That's right. If Zion travails. Yes. Uh, I was somebody else. Uh, the, the, the book says that they anxiously walked into the tomb to see the body of Jesus. But when they got there, the tomb was void of the body of Jesus. And instead of Jesus, they saw a young man dressed in white. And, and as opposed to being happy. Lord of mercy. As opposed to saying, Lord God, it looks as though the word of God that he foretold us is coming to fruition. As opposed to being happy at the possibility that the Lord had foretold them something and it was coming to pass. The Bible said that the women were not only affrighted and astonished. The book says that they, after they, they after that they saw and heard what the young men said, they conspired together not to tell anybody. Wow. Did you hear me? They conspired together not to tell anyone of the experience that they had. Huh? Hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. If you keep your mouth quiet, the glory of God cannot expand. You can't keep this to yourself. Oh. oh God, Lord of mercy, we doubt the power of God, we doubt the grace of God, and sometimes we may see and have an experience and we keep it to yourself, you can't keep the glory of God to yourself, the reason why he allowed you to see it is so that you can tell somebody of the goodness of Jesus, what if I keep this to myself, how is somebody going to break through, how is somebody going to heal it, how how would somebody be being delivered if I keep it to myself? You cannot get blessed if you keep it to yourself. Lord, help me this morning. You got to understand now that this action by the woman, which translates unbelief, is a sin that is grounded in hopelessness or resignation. This unbelief that the women were demonstrating is classified as sin that is grounded in hopelessness or resignation which is a state of mind that is ever pleasing which is never pleasing to God it's a state of mind that is never pleasing to God they did not tell it because they did not believe it Lord of mercy. They did not tell it because they could not fathom it. They did not tell it because they could not understand it. God calls it a sin. He calls it the sin of unbelief. You have heard that God has touched your situation, yet you refrain from believing. 